Good evening, Sean here, Mountains Garage. Continuing on the TH-475 race transmission build, tonight we're going to install the speedometer gears, the tail housing, the rear servo, the valve body, and maybe more. This video might be the end, we might finish it. So all I can do is start working and see where we end up. In the last video, we assembled the front pump, installed it and the BTE SFI Wellhausen. What I neglected to mention before I did to glue all that stuff in place, I plugged the hole with a paper towel in the 1-2 accumulator and per the ATD Transbrake instruction manual, lowered a quarter inch stock size Turbo 400 check ball and drove it into the channel that would feed that. I didn't want to drop the ball down the hole and have to disassemble the whole transmission. So I did that before I put the pump and bell housing on. Now on to some more fun stuff. I dug around in my driven speedometer gears. Back in the tail of the transmission, I want to run a speedometer gear. I don't care of the ratio. So I had a couple of 15 tooth. This came right out of the TH-475 drive gears. And I installed that on the output shaft with the stock clip. I don't know if you can see it. Stock clip is right there. You just push that down, slide the gear on, and that pops back up to hold it. There's a small hole that goes in the hole on the output shaft. Good job, ATI. It fit like a stock one. For the speedometer driven gear, the number of teeth on the gear has to match the numbers on the housing that holds it. For instance, this is a 36 to 39 tooth. It has to do with the offset. As you can see, they come in different heights. So that wouldn't fit in that, but this has a 43 tooth housing and that's a 43 tooth gear. And like I mentioned before, I just want potentially uh, something that will drive a pulse generator. I'm not trying to make the actual mechanical speedometer in the car accurate. So I just want something that's gonna spin around with the output shaft. In your gasket set, there should be a small package labeled installation kit. It should give you your dipstick choices, either the top hat or an O-ring. And it gives you your speedometer inner seal and outer seal. So we're going to need these. There's a small metal clip down inside that will go flying. I keep my thumb over the hole as much as possible. I still occasionally lose one, but I don't want to lose this one. Old seal out, new seal in. The clip is above it. You can just see it right there if you really study the picture. And of course you want to little, put a little lube on the driven gear and there should be some drag when it goes through the seal. Outside seal, a little bit of lube, it's going in the case. Your half metric cases, basically 76 and up, 75 and up, somewhere in that range, has a metric bolt, 10 millimeter head, and the hole in the clamp is actually smaller than the standard cases, which were 5 sixteenths. It's in, and it spins. Moving on to the next item, tail housing. The original plan, when I was building just one more transmission for myself, was to put the roller tail housing to match my roller strange yoke that I already have in my drive shaft. This is a BTE. $106, I believe. Excellent piece, but seeing as how this is going on the other transmission, I'm going to put a new aftermarket tail housing on the TH-475 we're currently working on. Uh, as usual, there's always a few differences in the aftermarket stuff. Most are M10 1.5 for the mount bolt holes. The BTE is still the traditional 7 16 course. The BTE also gives you the option of the quad ring instead of the gasket. This one does not. We're going to be using a gasket. And you just know I'm going to lube up the bushing and the seal. I drop a Loctite in every bolt, which is brand new. Gasket. Putting her together. Installed. If it wasn't dock out, I'd go out in my outside speed shop and get a new mount, but that'll have to wait. Now let's move on to the rear servo. Consulting the ATD billet TH400 transmake valve body instructions, 
I sound like a commercial. They take a different approach than other kits I've installed. Normal procedure is A, you either remove the rings from the 1-2 accumulator and use that now as just a spring holder and most install just a stock spring which would go inside here in your apply piston. Others have you do away with this all together and they give you a giant spring that goes over this spring. ATD tells you to junk all that stuff and you're going to install it just like that. With a new O-ring, of course. I always take the rear servo cover and just touch it on my belt sander. Earlier, I grabbed this one first. I sanded for almost two minutes, and I gave up. It's, it's bent, it's junk. You wouldn't know that by looking at it. It looked fantastic. This one is perfect. That's about maybe 10 seconds on the belt sander. I just touched it a few times. So I know it's flat. And of course, I'm using a new gasket. Measuring for the correct length of the rear band apply piston pin length, that's a mouthful. There is a special J tool, of course, and a page and a half on how to do it. I don't have any of that stuff, never have. Practical experience tells me that if I take the apply piston with no seal, I install it in its home, and when I push down, if I can do this one handed, which I can't. About the time that I push the piston below the surface on the rear of the case, you'll see the pin start to come up. And if I push hard enough, I can actually apply the band and I can tell it's only going to take maybe a quarter inch of stroke. But as soon as this clears this, this starts to pop up. I know I'm probably the right length. Never had any issue. It works well, but you can put your you wait on it, you can actually apply the band and stop the piston. You can see the total travel. Never have any trouble. But if you did, there are different pins available. Just an E-clip and a little spring to deal with. In this case, I'm going to put a new seal on it and install it. And the only thing that returns the piston is this original spring here. So gone is the accumulator spring, the accumulator, and the seals. I love throwing away more parts. They just don't need to be there. I installed the new seal on the piston, pushed it into place. Really easy because there's not additional springs pushing back on me. Put the new metal seal under the cover and tightened it down. Remember when tightening anything in the valve body area or the whole transmission, I just use a speed handle. Well, let me pan, pan back. I wonder if I'm the only one that has a set of cheap, clean sockets that I only use for tightening up clean stuff. The feed hole is right here. That's the apply hole. And if we take a rubber tip blow gun, we should hear it. You can actually watch the output. It's grabbing and rotating every time, so that's good to go. Moving on. If you glance down in the front band servo apply area, you can see that's the bolt that goes up into the case, case saver, in case you couldn't see it when we installed it a few videos ago. Now it's time to deal with the modulator valve, the instructions say we have to modify it. So I'm going to pull it out and modify accordingly. The ATD Transbrake Valve Body Instructions tell you what to do to the valve. Give me a few seconds on the grinder and I'll see what I can do. I ground my valve to look like that. I ground that down to lobe height. I assume that's lobe height. And I made about a 1 16th, 45 degree right there. Boom and boom. I'm going to slide the spring over it. Put it in the case. And they tell you how to check with the brake on and brake off after you install the solenoid. See which ports are covered or uncovered. Good morning. It's a new day. It got late last night. And I was frustrated because the first valve that I modified and polished up, about every fifth or sixth time that you shoved the brake valve in, it would stick in its bore. So I came out this morning, took a different valve. This time I cleaned and polished it and tried it in the bore, modified here, polished it up, tried it in the bore, and then modified here. Like the instructions say, you have to do two mods to the valve, that one and that one. It's in the instruction sheet. And now I have confidence that every time I push it all the way in, it returns. Before it would be fine till about there. If I went all the way, this would go back 
and the valve would stick. Don't quit until it functions every time. Otherwise, you'll just be working on it in the car. Going over the instructions before I bolt the valve body on for good. Reverse pattern to engage reverse. I can either put it in R and it'll back up without pushing the button or put it in neutral and push the button. You have options. Told you about wiring. We did the direct drum mod. We changed the pressure regulator, spring, low reverse piston, check, check ball in the case, file. I'm going to go over that because I've had some interest in that, but especially this area here, you got to make sure this is perfectly flat. Brake valve mods, scheduling to check, that worked out. Make sure the plastic ball is in the valve body. Install it, blah, blah, blah. Step 19, smoke the competition. That's funny. <laughs> I love a sense of humor. During case preparation, when everything's missing, the pocket and paw guide, the rear servo, everything on a Turbo 400 is on the same plane, perfectly flat, where this bolt's on, where this bolt's on, and all the valve body stuff. And the pan rail, everything is on the same level. So I avoid the pan rail and my super secret method of making sure this is flat and it's fun to watch when you're actually doing it because you'll see whether it's flat or not it'll instantly give you witness marks to tell you i just again this is during case prep so i'm going to wash it again so i just hose it down with a penetrating oil and i use nothing more fancy than a sharpening stone it has a coarse side and a fine side i probably got those backwards and you can see it's getting loaded up with stuff but i just literally go pick a side you know, in circles, back and forth, whatever you want to do, I go right out over everything, including the rear servo, because I want that to seal. And it doesn't take much. You have to concentrate around the bolt, because if you see anybody hammering a socket down there, they're probably making a mushroom out of the hole. If you have the proper fitting socket, it's not an issue. So just a chrome 3 8 12 point works fine. And that's it. It only takes me a few seconds. And I'm careful after that that I don't put that side down on the bench or something that's going to, you know, back it up and make me have to redo it. So, completely low tech. I'm sure there's better ways, but this has worked for years. About time for a new one. I got two of these. Sometimes I scrape them off with a razor blade, but they're not expensive. They're made for sharpening a jackknife. That's it. One of the great things about having a billet valve body with an external solenoid is in the pan, the only moving part is the manual valve and that plastic ball. That's it. No valves to stick, nothing to hide dirt. Or This is it right here. It's a solid hunk of aluminum with a few passages cut in it. So I'm going to sandwich that ball where it belongs. It came installed like that with the grease. And when I flip this over and lower it onto the studs I put in the case, no gaskets. All I have to do is line the pin up in the manual valve. It couldn't get any easier than that. It's so pretty, it almost glows, and I wish I had a see-through pan. <laughs> now I'm going to round up my stock bolts that I've got all cleaned up, bolt it down, move on to the filter. All tightened up. I like to take a piece of linkage and bolt it on and shift it all the way through the spectrum. First, second, third, neutral. Now we're ready for the filter. I'm going to be using my last Fleet God filter that I have. Made in the USA, good stuff. It comes with a anti-rust protectant in the box, so the filter still looks pristine. Sometimes the cheap ones, you take them out and they're all got surface rust on them. Made 12705, she's been sitting around a while. Probably a mistake, but it comes with two O-rings for the suction tube, and coincidentally, I want to put two O-rings on the suction tube. That's a happy accident. And I have a large collection of 545 allison pan gaskets this is a nice gasket but i'll probably throw it away because let's face it there's not that many four speed allisons they were usually in medium duty trucks gas jobs in the late 70s and 80s so i recently came across the deal and i bought six cases of the baldwin 19992 also american made it's the screen type filter race filter if you want uh, just like the fleet god is fleet god baldwin and wicks 
of probably the three premier filter companies in the United States, in my opinion. If you go to your local auto parts store, their gold series of filter is the Wix. So Wix Gold is Napa Gold, Cockwest Gold, etc. O'Reilly, I'm sure the same thing. They actually, actually O'Reilly sells it in the Wix box. Because I'm building two transmissions, I already had a transmission specialties. I believe the part number is a 4013 pan. It's sold by FTI, transmission specialties, and I believe this JEGS unit is the same thing. It does say made in USA. I've installed a whole bunch of them. They're ribbed on the bottom, no brand name, which I like. I really don't want anybody's brand name. Although I would like a B&M pan. One of these days I'll pony up the extra $75 and get one because I had one when I was 15 and I want to relive my youth. But for $100, you get one of these. We all know I'm a fan of the cork gasket. That's fine. The far pack, far pack is a black gasket. And I recently have re removed a few of those after being in service and they are glued on. You had to hammer the pan off. So they really seal up nice for a traditional inexpensive gasket. But I've been on a quest, like I mentioned in the last video, to find a decent reusable gasket for a Turbo 400. You've seen me use one of the Moroso blue ones. They're about 40 bucks. They're really nice, almost kind of squishy, but they're perfectly flat, which works out well with a flat pan. I don't, I assume they work okay with a stock 400 pan that has a ridge in between the bolts, but I haven't tried that. So today we're going to go a different way. I saw these reusable Turbo 400 gaskets on the Summit site for $16. That's the pot number. I haven't used one yet. This will be a first try. There's a ridge on the outer edges. Interesting. With the flat cast aluminum pan, almost anything would seal. So I expect this to be a home run, but reusable in the future. Let's give it a shot. The pan gasket has the rings around the bolt holes. It would make it extremely difficult to over tighten. You can probably tighten to your heart's content and you're not going to compress it. Seems to fit nice. The pan comes with everything for install. I prefer the filter tubes that have the wings on them that locate it to the case so you can't get this angle wrong. But I put two O-rings on it and managed to get it down in there. This piece on the case side is an extremely tight fit to the case, which is not a bad thing. It just takes a little bit of maneuvering to get it in. To install any deep pan on a Turbo 400, you need a longer bolt to hold the filter and a spacer. The factory spacer is just a piece of tube. The one that comes in the kit actually has this reduced section, which it does not come with either flat washer. I like to add those. I don't like the look of how that fits without a washer. Same with the other side. This opening is almost as big as a bolt hole. Installed, the washes sandwich the filter rigid. In stock form, the Turbo 400 filter floats around too much for my liking. The car is going to do violent things. I don't need my filter jumping around. So after I tighten that, I make sure it's still 100% down on the tube. And we're ready for the pan. If you watch my channel, which I hope you do, hey, you're here now. You know I'm going to give a fair review of any pots, good or bad, and in this case, this Jags Made in USA pan is a total win. A very nice piece, zero issues installing, no problem getting all the bolts started and tightened up. It has a half 20, it even tells you the thread size, magnetic drain plug, and it's good looking. If I was to find a, a gig or something wrong with it, not the pan's fault, but they're Allen headed bolts, so be sure to bring your Allen sockets with you. If you need to remove the pan, a little more difficult than finding a half inch socket to get your pan off somewhere on the side of the road. But if you're doing that, you're thinking ahead, you probably got every tool known to man with you. And brackets for the shifter and a transmission shield. The transmission shield uses two bolts on either side. These bolts are slightly recessed for the Allen. I run a spacer on those shield bolts anyway, so I'll just need longer hardware. Not the pan's fault. They couldn't plan for every particular installation down the road. They were nice enough to give me 13 Allen headed bolts to bolt it on today. 
I do believe that heavy cast pan adds a lot of torsional rigidity to the case. It's just a solid feel when you put it on and bolt it up. Sure is pretty if you like transmissions. <laughs> I installed a 1 8 pipe, 90 degree, quarter inch DOT airline push connect in the vent fitting and gave enough line to reach down to an overflow tank. Obviously with an 8th pipe connection you could run braided. The sky's the limit. I popped in the top hat and I'll plug this hole for storage. I still have the option of running the helicoil tap into this hole and putting an M10 one and a half thread insert if I want to run the dipstick I normally run because it's the one that goes with the flex plate shield over a stock bell housing. In this case, I don't need that. A lot of other popular dipsticks use this hole and I can just leave that vacant because as you know on an LS is a water jacket there. This hole isn't used. They went back to using the same one they back they used in the 50s and 60s up here. I wish they just left it on from the, the whole time and there wouldn't be this whole LS specific bell housing thing. So. When you're using a Chevrolet case without that, you just run five bolts. You know what happens? Nothing. <laughs> sure is pretty. Did I say that already? If you love transmissions. Well, we did it. We actually completed the TH-475 race transmission. This is the longest I've ever spent assembling a transmission. Longer than the first one I ever did, and I don't remember when that was. I was a teenager. It took a lot of off-camera work to make sure I had all the parts and stuff lined up for the next, you know, segment, if you will. Uh, you don't want to watch me run around looking for stuff or clean something I forgot to clean. That would just double this process. So I try to do enough prep work. That's normal to make sure that the shoot looks pretty good, adequate anyway. In the future, when I get the valve body, oh, deciding to build two transmissions at once also slowed the process down. Normally I can pull that off off camera, on camera, that just made double the work. Kind of glad I didn't have the valve body for that one, but when I do get it, I will finish that transmission just like this one, step by step, for the most part. And I have been researching and bought a couple Solenoid valves to make a uh, two dump valve setup, so I might as well put one on each transmission and miscellaneous fittings and stuff. I already regret when I had the ICT billet governor cover in my hand and I tapped it an eighth inch for a miscellaneous vent or return on the top of it. I should have gone ahead and done the quarter inch on the bottom because my solenoid valves a quarter inch and dash six line just like the cool lines because they're hooked into that. So we'll handle that in the future as well. So thanks for following along. I have to get, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to this afternoon where I can just turn the radio and the fan back on and just numb out and work on more transmissions. In the future, we're going to do something different, I promise. Like, share, subscribe, if I didn't already say that. Ring the bell. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the comments and people give me encouraging words. Sometimes the internet is not a friendly place, but my experience with this channel has been really decent. And I try really hard to give you accurate information. That's super important to me. Sometimes I watch my video and I pick up a mistake. It's already out there and done. And it just goes in my brain as something I'll have to live with. But I really try hard to be as accurate and honest as possible. So thanks a lot. Catch you next time.